Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct and today I'm talking about short socks and I'm also going to be talking about how you can mend your regular socks that may have a hole in them. And so I wanted to show you just a little example of that. I, these are one of our alpaca socks we have here at Alpaca Direct and this was the start of a little hole. It was completely a black circle and it had a lot of the alpaca had worn off the back. And so what I did is I threaded a darning needle and I used, you can see these three different colorways. It's um, Regia Darning Thread, and we have this for sale on Alpaca Direct, and it's a 75-25% uh, wool and nylon, and so it's perfect sock yarn for mending socks. And so you have these wonderful, kind of pricey alpaca socks, and we they get they wear out after time, and so instead of throwing them out, you can actually darn them yourself. And so what I do when I'm darning the socks, you can use all the, the professional sock makers have these um, kind of like a sock mending tool that they use. And, um, but me at home, I just use the dog's ball from the dog box. <laughs> I like to use what I already have. And because I'm not going to be mending socks for a living. I'm just going to be fixing my own alpaca socks. These happen to be Jim's that were in his drawer. And my goal, what I'm trying to do when I'm darning my socks, is I'm going to first go one way, making, picking up little tiny, tiny, a strand, a strand, a strand, and making, going all the way across, weaving in and out, going all the way, this way, this way, this way, this way, back and forth, making a kind of a checkerboard looking uh, fabric, a new amount of fabric. That way when we wash it, we have a sock that's mended, and it has all the strands are replaced. So if you look, I have my, my darning needle and my thread right here, and I would just go along, and the, um, the less amount of strands that you can pick up, if you can pick up every other strand, you'll have a more tightly woven um, mend um, than if you pick it up too wide. And I'm just trying to pick up one little strand here and there. Miss a strand, pick up a strand, miss a strand, and pick up a strand. And then another thing that I like to do is I like to go a little bit past where the hole is, just so that I'm getting um, a better mend um, in the sock and getting to over to where this, the fabric is a little bit more stable. And then I would take that darning needle and then take my darning thread and pull it on through. Now when you're pulling it through, you don't want to pull it too tight. Pull it kind of um, just tight enough to bring that strand through, but not tight enough that you're going to pull these strands out of shape. And so then I would start again from this side, picking up, trying to pick up every other strand. Everyone's coming online. Yep, Good morning, coming. everyone. Colors. Yeah, there were a lot of people that were talking about, I don't know if you guys out there have really nice socks that you just adore, and you hate to have them, uh, to throw them out because they've developed a hole in them. And so this is a great way for you not to have to throw them out. You can actually fix them. And we actually have customers that come into the store all the time saying that they have these wonderful socks. Either they're made out of alpaca or yak or something like that. And they're really valuable. And so they don't want to throw them out when they develop, develop a hole. They just want to mend them and continue using them. Because, you know, um, socks can be quite an investment. And... Um, just mending this little hole is going to make a world of difference and make your sock last for much longer that way. And then once I get done going back and forth this way, then I'm going to turn and go back and forth this way, all the way starting from the outer edge, all the way across, and really taking my time. When I'm done, you should see all blue strands and very little black strands. And so that's how easy it is to mend your own sock. Now this week and last week I was working on shorty socks, right? And 
I really enjoyed doing these. Hey, you guys out there, while we're working on our things, if you're working on something that's really interesting, don't forget to post comments in the comment section and let us know what you're working on because every week we have a prize. And so for this last week, we had, we were giving away a skein of our uh, Coeur d'Alene Sasquatch yarn and the one colorway was Emerald Lock and the other colorway was the Coeur d'Alene colorway. And I think the, color, the Coeur d'Alene colorway went one right Jim? Yep. They were both yeah. popular though. But they're yeah they're beautiful yarns. I totally love these. And what yarns. are they made out of? Um, it is a wool and it's 80% um, superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And these are hand dyed sock yarns. Totally nice. And you should be for most people unless you have a really big foot, one skein should get you a pair of socks. So on mine, I the, here's my colorway that I used from the Sasquatch yarns. Can I bring it turn it around here for you Jim. So that was the one that I did and I forget what the name of the colorway was but I still have enough to do another pair of socks. If you see here I have plenty of yarn left to be able to do one more pair of socks and the yarn is so lovely. This is washed and blocked and it is really really nice yarn so I'm really enjoy, enjoying working with it. That brings me to another thing. For all of you who have shopped at Alpaca Direct, you guys know that I try every single yarn that we bring in to make sure it's of good quality and that it's, um, I like to bring in reasonably priced yarns too. Sometimes they're a little bit more expensive, but I feel that whatever yarns I brought in are worth the extra um, cost that they may be. So the ones that I did for this week, Jim, were called the Skimmer Socks. And here they are right here. And, um, this pattern is a free pattern on Ravelry. It's by Sheila Toy Stromberg, and it has over 11,000 projects on it. And I discovered that um, she has um, a sort of a tutorial that goes with it or what have you. But it is a super simple pattern. And if you look at my toes and my heels, I tried this um, yarn here. Um, it, yeah. I tried the yarn on the toe and heel. That was a, a sock yarn that I was um, testing to see if we might like it to bring it in. And the colors on it are beautiful and vibrant, but the yarn itself isn't nearly as soft as the other sock yarns that we have. So I may not be bringing it in. Although it is very vibrantly colored, it's just, I don't know, maybe I'm a little picky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a yarn snob. <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah, so I try every yarn, and if it's of good quality and it works well, then I like to bring it in. So when we did our socks, um, this first sock, our Rose City Rollers, and this was by Mara Catherine Burn, um, Burner, and she, this is a free pattern on Ravelry too. And she just has a rolled cuff on hers. If you see up here, see this rolled cuff? It's just stockinette stitch. And for me, stockinette stitch is not going to work. I run too fast and I will run straight out of my socks. So what I decided to do is use this sock, um, it's, um, ma, it's called Sock Mod and it's by the Pearl Bug. And this is a free um, little pattern that you can add to your sock. It's called Heel Tab for Short Socks. And I used a provisional cast on. And then I, if you look at the inside of my sock, you can't even see where I joined my provisional cast on. That's why I love provisional cast on so much. This is it right here. It's wonderful. And it makes a really, really super nice heel tab. So your sock won't don't fall down in your shoe. <laughs> Which is really nice when you're wearing ankle socks that they don't fall down in your shoe. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this pattern. And I tried, um, you know how I always like to try and change things. I tried to think of a sock tab that might be easier because this uses some short rows or what have you. But I couldn't find anything that was easier or better. So if you guys like a heel tab, this was really, really good one. I really enjoyed doing it. And I couldn't even change a darn thing except for the provisional cast on. In the pattern, it tells you to cast on and then, um, and then seam it together. And... Um, you know, I don't like that. <laughs> I want that invisible seam that looks beautiful. So I prefer doing the provisional cast on. So that was totally awesome. And then I thought, well, I might try these summer, um, summer socks. And so this was the next one that I did. And I really like this pattern. 
It was really fun. It's a kind of a different um, construction, but they're also similar. Um, they look similar, but this one, it, it goes down to here and then goes straight across. And this is the rounded toe. I love the rounded toe. This was a regular toe. Let's put them side by side. This is a regular toe, and that is a rounded toe. I think the rounded toe looks so awesome. I love it. So for those of you who are out there, if you get a chance to try the um, Rose City Rollers and do the rounded toe, it was really fun. I really like it. It's very addicting. Also, I wanted to show you how to pick up st stitches on your heel gusset because on mine, if you look here on the edge, so I picked up stitches all along here and you can see my knit stitches are completely maintained and I never seamed anything. I never got a hole. I never had to seam anything on the inside of my sock. See? I didn't have to go back and fix it. It was perfect. <laughs> so I want to show you how I did that. And that was a question from last week, right? Yes, it was a question that one of our customers asked, can you show me how to pick up the stitches on the edge? And I thought, oh, I got to show you this. So I'm going to come over here and sit down. Let's do the contest first. Oh, sure. Okay. So you guys, every week we have a contest, and I forgot to tell you what the contest was for this week. Shame on me. So Cascade has these heritage prints, and these are, it's a really fun sock yarn. It's 75-25 of wool and nylon. And it's a great sock yarn that's self-striping. And if you look on here, you can see the different pattern ways. And this one on the left hand, your right hand side is Seattle colorway. And the one on the left is the um, Independence colorway. And so you guys choose and let me know which one you think our customers might like. And then we can send it out in the mail to them. So which one's Seattle? But Seattle. Okay. And Independence for 4th of July or something. These make um, not just cute socks. I've made sock monkeys with um, heritage prints and they make really cute sock monkeys. And so that's something to keep in mind too. So let's take a second here and see if we can take a look. I am making another one of these socks and I'm using my leftover. This, right, this pink yarn right here is Zen Garden Serenity 20. And I wanted to show you some things about this little sock. I didn't change too much, but on the top of the foot, when you actually put it on your foot, I did a few short rows right here, along here. So to bring this up, make it a little bit longer, so that when I put it on my foot, it, um, it doesn't stretch out and cover so little of my foot that I, it falls off my foot. And then when I was weaving in my ends, I was weaving in my ends along here and it was making it look bad. So I took it out because all it was doing is making the stitches right here look uneven. That's why it still kind of looks a little bit funny. And I need to block it again to fix that because it was perfect before I tried to weave in the end along there. And, and that was kind of sometimes, you know, if it doesn't turn out right and you don't like the way that it is um, looking when you're weaving in ends, take it out and redo it. That's what I did and it made it look better. So here I am on this pattern and, and I've done my on? heel flap, right? I've done the heel flap and it tells you to finish on the pearl row. A couple things I wanted to show you about this. Um, it tells you to do 28 rows and to count these 28 rows on the knit stitches right here is impossible to see. So what I did that made it easier is on the first you go knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. And so um, this one here, I marked my first row. So I can count the ones that I slipped. So if you have 14 slip stitches, then you know that you have 28 rows because you're going to be slipping that stitch on one row and, and you, when you come back, you're purling back. So if I go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, right? So that's 14 knit stitches right there. And I want to see 14 stitches below my needle because I'm going to be picking up stitches and this row that's on the needles, I won't be picking up that stitch. So you want to see those stitches. And then 
when I go to pick up stitches, I take my yarn and I'm going to be picking up, actually on this one, let me go back here. Because what I want to really do is I want to get to this left hand side. So uh, slip one, knit one. I want to go over to this other side. So I want to show you because if I'm slipping it from that or um, picking up stitches from that side, it'll show pearl bumps on the outside. That won't look good. So like I said, I'm not actually in the part of the pattern where I'm going to be picking up. I still have to do one little tiny heel gusset um, section before I do my actual pickups. So, but I wanted to show you this. And what is it? That What's Just how to pick this? how to pick up stitches. Also, when you're picking up stitches for your um, heel gusset, whoops. When you're picking up stitches for your heel gusset, make sure that you are. I like to pick up two strands. So I like to pick up the. Do you see how this is curling like this? Be very careful when you go to pick up your stitches. You have to roll your work all the way to the back. Do you see all, if you roll it all the way, then you can see knit stitches. This very first row, this row right here is the row that you wanna pick up. And then when it tells you to pick up 14 stitches, you'll be picking up those two strands of that V. Okay, and on that first one, make sure to snug it tight because what you don't want is a sloppy first stitch. Every sloppy stitch is a possibility of having a stitch that develops a hole. So really hanging on to your working yarn and picking up those stitches snugly. And if you can't do that, get a smaller needle. With me, this is a number one needle. I can't go much smaller than number one. So I keep my regular needle size. And what I do is I pick up the um, stitch snugly. So we're picking up and knitting 14 stitches. So I have most of them picked up. And do you see on the back here that this whole knit stitch on the back is maintained? That's how I do it. And what it gives you is right here. Do you see how even when I'm pulling on it, it gives you a beautiful pickup that looks really seamless and it makes your socks so you do not have to mend your socks later. There's nothing worse than doing a pair of socks and you have to go way back and um, mend them later. So um, anyways, um, that's a great way to pick up stitches for the heel gusset of your socks so you don't have holes. So don't forget you guys to vote. We need to figure out who the winner is gonna be for our heritage prints. And one of them is gonna be for the Seattle colorway and one is for independence. And then if you guys have socks that you're darning at home or you have valuable socks that you wanna fix, remember this is what you use. You use Regia darning thread and it can be found at Alpaca Direct. And your goal is to make a mesh. So intertwine all those stitches. So they're go overlapping each other. And then you have a perfect seal, right? A, a new fabric right over the top of your sock. And it'll last much, much longer by doing it that way. And I have also shown you here that these are our N20 socks. And the N20 socks, we have... Yes, these are extreme boot socks, and they're some of my favorites. And you, you see how the darning thread can match very closely to that. And this darning thread is hard to find, and it's found on Alpaca Direct. And we probably have, what do we have, uh, 20, 25 plus colors in it. And it um, is not super expensive, so it's an easy way to mend um, a valuable sock and mend it with the actual fiber that will work best with your wonderful socks. So, and um, the contest for this week, or this last week, should I say, um, was for the cord length colorway in our Sasquatch sock yarn. And let's see who the winner was. Um, oh, 
Joanne F. Anderson. Yay! Joanne, you won. You won some sock yarn. So all you need to do is get in contact with customer service at Alpaca Direct, and we can send this out in the mail to you. So congratulations. I hope you enjoy using this for socks, or maybe you can make a lovely shawl with it too. It's great shawl yarn. So I'm looking here at my summary and um, I showed you how you can mend your expensive socks all on your own and without buying a bunch of tools, just using a little uh, darning, um, the darning thread and your own darning needle and then um, making your socks and picking up stitches so you don't have any holes to mend later. So that's a wonderful skill to learn and I would really, really advise you to practice that. And I like to pick up both strands of the stitch, not just one strand when I'm doing socks because I want my socks extra sturdy and I don't want to have to go back later and say, oh, there's a hole and apologize for something. I want it to be beautiful the first time. And don't forget when you guys are trying to figure out your knitting projects for the summertime, socks make great projects. And doing two at a time in the round, do, whether they're top down or toe up, it's totally fantastic project to work on during the summer months when it gets warm because this sock yarn is a lot easier to work with and a lot more fun to work with than a yarn that is super big and heavy because remember how wool gets really warm and sometimes when I've done projects in the summertime and it's a big project I'll just be sweating up a storm and I like to what I what I'll do sometimes is take like a cotton pillowcase and put it over my lap and then put the wool on top of it so that I don't get too hot but boy it's much easier just to do socks so if you like the thought of doing socks you should try and learn how to do socks because it really is super fun and these two patterns the rose city rollers by Mara Catherine burn burner this is a free pattern on Ravelry and the summer skimmer socks and this is also a free pattern on Ravelry. So I hope that you guys have a great week. I've really enjoyed doing my socks. This next week, I think I'm going to be doing a vest pattern. It's called Calidez. And so I will be looking forward to sharing that with you next week. So you guys enjoy yourself, and I will see you next Tuesday.